Thank you, Rich, and welcome to the booth here. We got uh, our last round to decide our winner of the pod. And this is, of course, huge, right? When you lead in to your tournament with a 3-0 in draft, it means the unexpected, the, the part that you can't really predict you've managed to nail it. And then, of course, you hope that you did a good job designing your standard deck from there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anytime you see uh, kind of the records of players and what it takes to make, into the, make it into the top eight, more often than not, you're, you're looking at somebody who had a 5-1 and one or a 6-0 and oh in the limited portion. So starting out with that 3-0 gives you a lot of that momentum and, of course, also make, means that you only need to pick up one more win to lock yourself into day two. That's right, and that is what our two players in the main feature match are gonna be duking it out for here. You see two of the spicier ones. Uh, you know, we oh, saw yeah. Autumn Burchett pull out a crazy victory <laughs> in that last round, and not the corn, goes to the porn on the other side. Uh, it's funny, you start to browse the deck list and you're like, all right, green, white, okay, there's some token-y stuff, and then it just kind of goes, you know, and all of a sudden, you see Invasion of Alara in there. You see two copies of Galta and Maverin. And the deck actually has a ramp slash fixing sub theme that allows it to go very, very big, as we saw it did in round one versus Reed Duke. Yeah. I will note that it, it does look like you look at some of those gold cards in Nanticorn's deck, and you're like, oh, wow, he's going kind of nuts. But only has a couple of cards that are other colors. For the most part, you saw that in the last round, too. He can just curve out and beat people down with just that solid green white, uh, kind of that solid green white base. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, once you get to seven mm. mana, it's called to time. And in his deck, that actually happens quite consistently. Yeah, when you have two. Two of them. <laughs> doesn't hurt. See one of the key cards here for Nanth the Corn. He's got his important tracker. And the, this is the type of card that can help him ramp. And then in his deck, it actually does help him fix as well, particularly if you see Blighted Burgeoning. Wow, no two drop here from Autumn. Just going to pass the turn back over. Yeah, that is, that is rough because when you are playing this red-white strategy, you absolutely need to curve out because you're not, most of the time, it's going to be hard to overpower other decks in the late game. See, um, for, for once, Nanthicorn's actually going to kind of hope that Autumn taps out. <laughs> oh, then this is going <laughs> to be brutal. He's favor. If, if, if Autumn goes Harried Artisan, attack you, you can go block, fertile its favor, put two <laughs> counters, kill the 2-3, and put a land into play. And it looks and like Autumn, uh, Autumn's going to sidestep that yeah. little. So Kith can Billy Rider there. And now we're going to see not the core not get full value, but at least find a clean window for Fertilid's favor to get right. resolved. And that, of course, means that a Plains is going to hit the battlefield. We see that there already is a Galton Mavern in the hand here for not the corn. So working his way up. Yeah. Currently sitting on five mana available with the land drop here. That would be number six. And then next turn, we could see mm. the big dino hit. Yeah, it looks like there's a Plains too. So just needs mm -hmm. one more land here to slam that incredible seven drop into play. Yeah, you see a little bit of the downside to the splashing here. Um, Nanthicorn actually had the Botanical Brawler in hand from the get-go and couldn't cast it until all the way here, turn four, because that swamp. Right, yeah. It's not free, right? Um, Nanticorn does have the kind of, when you math out a, how many sources mm -hmm. do I need to cast all my spells, he kind of has it, mm -hmm. but that'll also delay you in casting some of those spells, right? You go, okay, well, I have five planes in my deck, but I have a burgeoning, mm -hmm. I have a Fertilid's Favor, I'll eventually get there. But that, of course, means you're giving up percentage points to play that Brawler on two. Oh, and here one of my go. favorite cards in the format here, Marshall. Me too, Invasion of Zendikar comes down. And this is one of those that hits the real sweet spot, right? This has a meaningful effect on the board right now. As you can see, it's going to set up Not the Corn to be able to cast that uh, Galton Maverick next turn. Also, cast any card in his deck, right. thanks to getting the other two basic land types there. But also, you have to judge a battle based on what it turns into. And this one turns into a very solid creature, a 4-4. Four, four. It's got haste, which usually doesn't matter. But it can make mana. It is a good card that you want onto the battlefield, and he is going to attack it right now. Looks like just going to choose to use the tracker's ability to remove a counter from the invasion. Okay. And so two turns away from, from playing it. But that's a really another nice thing. How much defense these battles have is extremely important, right? It is. And when you look at something like Invasion of Zendikar, you're looking at just three. It's so cheap. It's so easy to flip. It is. And that's the difference because there are other battles that look like they'd be really powerful if you can flip it. 
but they have a defense of five, defense mm -hmm. of six. And those are cards that are actually not the types of cards that you want in your deck a lot of the time. Yeah, four is the baseline. And if you see anything above that, it's a lot more than you think. Right. But it goes the other way, too. Three is significant. It's often one attack, right? It, it can just be one single attack that can get it transformed. Mm -hmm. That's very difficult with four. So this is a potential big attack this turn here from Autumn. Yeah, Autumn's deciding what to do with the backup ability on the Scald here. Yeah, you put it there, then you can mm -hmm. attack with both creatures. But of course, you also have to be mindful of the fact that there is an invasion of Zendikar in play. So how many creatures do you want to attack with? Do you just attack with one to make sure you have enough blockers? Right. But there's also that inevitability because you know that there's a tracker in play. So within two turns, that Zendikar is going to flip. By the way, all of Autumn's creatures have double strike at the moment. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I have not seen that before, although that will fade away uh, um, for the Harrier. But we're going to see a massive play here from Nanthakor. Oh, yes. As he's got Galta and Maverin, and there it is <laughs> on the battlefield. Nothing Get that Autumn Burchett can do. She's got no mana available, only one creature back, and, uh, you know, likely to see this... Uh, Invasion of Zendikar get transformed in addition to some damage. So, a couple of things you can do here. If you, if you want, you can just guaranteed flip, flip the Avenger of Zendikar, attack with both creatures, right? And then perhaps make two 1-1 one, one lifelink tokens. That is an option here. Um, because the, 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 there's a 3-2 double striker in play, you don't have a great attack with the creatures that you have right now. Now, Nanthakorn has to think about, of course, what kind of removal spells Autumn yeah. could have here. And, you know, I, I'll tell you, if I'm Nanthakorn, I'm 100% thinking about aerial boost as well. Right. Like, I don't want to lose. Sure. Yeah, right? absolutely. Wow, okay. That's some respect. Not even a single attack? Yeah, and Autumn very patient with that Realm Breaker's Grasp. Very, very juicy target here. Get that 12-12 Trampler out of the way. Not the corn sitting back. It's got a 3-3 three, three and a 2-2. Two, two. Now remember, Realm Breaker's Grasp is fantastic here. It <laughs> will prevent the Galta from attacking, but the triggered abilities from Galta will still happen. So. You, you, you certainly a great way to deal with the Galta that's in play, but if you attack with other creatures, you still have the ability to make a big trampling creature or some X-1-1 tokens. Nanthakorn able to deploy the ramp fixing game plan even into a big card, but once again we see the relative mm -hmm. lack of removal hurting Nanthakorn here. Mm -hmm. okay. This is going to be Invasion of Mercadia. Get rid of a planes. This is another uh, angle on battles as well, Paul. We talked about uh, how much defense they have and what you get on the other side. But there's a few of them that only cost two mana, and that's a game changer too. Most right. of them cost four or five. Yeah. And the, the, for, for this one, it's one of those, hey, this card just on rate by itself? It's just a fine card to play in most decks, right? We're looking at, you know, the, the, the Tormenting mm -hmm. Voice is a card that's existed previously where it's not the best card, but you'll play it in some decks just to filter. Little and flood you'll get protection. that effect. Mm -hmm. And then there's that bonus, and right? You just get this it's huge all upside. Bonus. Yeah, really great card. Looks like the Fearless Scald is deciding whether to rumble, and if so, in what direction. Looks like we want a creature here. Yeah, no obvious blocks here for yeah. Nanthacorn. I, Do you, just, you know, you, you would prefer to go for a double block if you knew everything, but that I think isn't just, even great for you. Right. There's just, I mean, you can just put the brawler in front in front of it. Oh. I mean, this is the best block. Yep. Best like assuming block. no tricks. This will kill both of the creatures. Yes, all of them. All of them, and Nanthacorn can then remove a counter, but still one short. Mm. Well, it's a sorcery speed, so... Oh, excuse me, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. No, Nanthacorn has work to do, no doubt yeah. about it. I, I think what Nanthacorn's thinking is that the Fearless Scald is a way that he can get 
kind of cheesed Hold out, right? right? Just like, oh, you're dead, you yeah. know. Remember, remember, Autumn also has multiple copies of aerial boosts. Exactly, in her deck. terrifying card. I mean, Northcorn has nothing now, right? I, that does seem to be the case, Paul. Okay, needs to find something. It here. just needs to find a couple of creatures, really. Something big. Something big would be amazing, and Nanticorn has plenty of big stuff. I mean, Galta number two? Yeah, Galta number two would be great. Invasion of Alara would be amazing. Oh, he's just passed the turn back, though. He's got a pair of lands. This could fall apart very quickly here yeah. for Nanticorn. I wouldn't be surprised to see um, Autumn you know, use some resources to, to try to get Invasion of Mercadia transformed in addition to piling on some damage. The one archetype in the format that really has to make the big decisions on whether attack battles is the one she's playing. You, most of the others are like, if you can transform a battle, you do so. Right. This is the one where it's like, I may be able to just kill you in two turns. Right. The, yeah. The question is, do you just do you, especially do you even, with this? Do you just do you even attack the battle, or do you just? Go That's straight? what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, this I is going to be. Transform the Dune Shaper, damage. and by the way, the new guy has haste too. One, yeah, so this is 11 artisan. damage. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, One short. Perhaps kill the invasion and deal seven. Hmm. And Nanthcorn doesn't have any sweepers next turn. That's an additional attacker. This, this right? sounds weird, but I don't think it matters. Like, it might actually just be better to just put you to one and say you have to right. block four things next yeah. turn. Yeah. Get you to one. Yeah, I like it. That, that's what I would do, too. Because you don't care about Galton Maverick. You know, realistically, right. even uh, Invasion of Alara wouldn't be enough. Oh, yeah, and that's going to be a, a scoop, scoop there. So game number one. Boy, there was a window there for Nanticorn to top deck something huge, and he didn't yeah. hit it. And the constant pressure from Autumn Burchett, way too much to handle. I mean, those double strikers are really, really annoying, especially if your deck kind of lacks removal. Definitely. And Nanticorn, again, also doesn't have a whole lot of removal. A lot of great cards at the top of the curve, but... Oh, does have Cosmic Hungers, though. Yes. Ooh, and look at this curve here from, from Autumn. We have the signpost uncommon of the set here, the, hop, the Mirror Shield Hoplite. And this card, if you just play a couple of backup spells, it can get out of hand real fast. This is a reason to play red-white. Uh, I'll be honest, there's not a lot yeah. <laughs> of reasons to play red-white, but that Mirror Shield Hoplite, Absolutely. that is one of them. Yep. Nice little curve out here for Nanthicorn. And I wonder if Nanthicorn's going to fire off the hunger immediately, or or wait. You got your answer. There you go. Cosmic hunger yeah. right now, and it's I like you guarantee afford. you that's the correct decision. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. You can nab a backup counter sometimes by waiting. Yeah. But my goodness, if but you get it, if you get aerial boosted. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, that is the that is the disaster situation, for sure. All right, there's a Harried Artisan coming in, down to 19. Well, Nanthicorn's hand is pretty pretty nice there. Tangled mm -hmm. Skyline, adding a counter to the Brawler, gaining five, five, and now all your Incubate tokens will also have reach. So these Artisans, even when they transform, won't be that effective. That's really strong. Wow, Tangled Skyline, which I believe he has two of, is really a card that Autumn does not want to see on the other side. Yeah. You know, again, we've talked a lot about aerial boost, especially in Autumn's build. Very scary, easy way to end the game. Combos with Zada. If you can just get a couple, like, already there's a 5-5 five five that will be awoken soon. In, even one more of them, and it's just, yeah. that doesn't do anything like anymore. My red-white deck just goes, well, how can I actually even get you? Now right. all your creatures have reach. I mean, just a 5-5 five five with reach is so, so hard. So big, and then you're throwing in a life gain of 5. Yeah. Like, that is a game-changer, too, in a red-white deck that's trying to sort of eke over the finish line. Right. Things have gone really well for Nanthicorn so far in this game. No doubt about it. Red Cap Heal Slasher for Autumn at least is a good tap out. But ultimately, you know, 3-4 first strike doesn't look so great on this board. 
Mm -hmm. We see a transformation yes. here for Nanticorn. Yes. And you can also play, uh, no, no land here, so cannot play the Converter Beast. Oh, All right, we're in a racing situation. I mean, given the fact that Nanticorn has the Cosmic Hunger in hand, you can feel pretty okay about here, uh, about this situation. That's right. The, the Brawler has Trample. So he can go ahead and make this attack, and even if the right. obvious block happens, he can just use Cosmic Hunger and not give right, up any exactly. damage. Exactly. And that's what's happening right now. Oh, right. Scroll Whoa. shift your skyline. Put a counter. Oh, that's really oh, nasty. Man. That is really nasty, <laughs> Nanticorn. That was an unkind Jeez. gesture. And is that a sideboard scroll shift maybe for the Realm Breaker's Grasp? Good I'm not question. Sure. Um, but how about five more life, a free plus one, plus one counter, which, by the way, wins combat, <laughs> and an extra 5-5 five, five reach to boot. That is gross. That was not nice. Yeah, I, I mean, now, now you're looking at, you're on the red-white side of things. I mean, your opponent is, has bigger creatures, is at 27. I mean, what percentage how, of the field would scoop right here? Like at least twenty, right? I mean, People if I was going, playing, ah, look, let's if just I'm playing at my local game shop, probably conceding uh -huh. at the Pro Tour, probably have to play it out, right? But, but you wouldn't be happy about having to play this one out if you're in Autumn Seed, because the, the the amount of ways that you can find a way to win, being severely behind on board, and your opponent's at twenty seven life just doesn't yeah. just doesn't add up. Yeah. And we mentioned it a minute ago, Paul, but Tangled Skyline, we've already seen it twice in this game. Like, it got blinked, but there is another in the list, too. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, this card and, definitely and has kind of overperformed. Definitely. Go, going in, because when you first look at it, you go, well, I'm tapping out, and I don't put a permanent in play that can block right away. So perhaps I can get run over, but that's why that five life is there, right? It gives you that time, and then it becomes so difficult to attack once you untap. And I mean, look at this. Autumn is forced to just start using removal spells on the 5-5 five five Phyrexians. I, yeah. Not where you want to be. Right. And by the way, the scroll shift was out of the sideboard, Paul. Okay. So yeah. nice from not the corn. Also making it extremely difficult for Autumn to try to figure out What's there? Uh-oh, what's happening now? I don't know. He's, he's excited, though. I know. I can see that, by the way, he's tapping. Is it just a Converter Beast? It, it might be a Converter Beast just to turn the Brawler into a 5-5, five five, because now that you have a pair of 5-5s five in play, you do get to play around a potential aerial boost that Autumn could have. So good, good sequencing here. Get in there. The heavy hitters. And that's yeah. going to be enough for Autumn Burchett. Uh, she lasted longer than most, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> that was an absolute avalanche of board presence, life total, card advantage. Getting it done. Wow. Game number three coming up between these two. I'll remind you that they are playing for the pod. So whoever wins this will come away with the 3-0. And it looks like Autumn's on seven. And you can see Nanticorn Mulligan to six. That makes sense, right? Uh, you know, Autumn has a clean two-color deck. Nanticorn yeah. has some ambitious splashing in there. You're going to have to mull every once in a while. Nanticorn with a fairly um, kind of sketchy hand here, right? Doesn't do anything until what? Turn. Oh, didn't see the tracker in hand. So that, that changes that, things that a lot. That does change things because of Invasion of Zane Zendikar. Right, That's absolutely. right. Is that a Spell Spear to kick things off? And then a Valduk here from Autumn Burchett. Back over to you. Good curve out to start things off for Autumn. Good curve. Now, Nanticorn's going to take another big hit here, but he's going to be able to go Invasion of Zendikar, and then next turn follow that up with this Tangled Skyline, right? Yeah, so. and he's going to lean on that Skyline to try to get him back, but Autumn may be able to find a window. You know, this, this Skyline effectively, whenever it hits the board, will negate, for example, this next attack that's going to come in. And then the dust will settle, and we'll yep. see where we're at. Yep. Because this is a very good start for Autumn, as Nanticorn has more or less taken the first two turns off, right? Like, yeah. they, no blocking, no removal, nothing like that. Yeah, if, if, if Autumn can find one of her halberds, that would be great here, right? Just oh, to put in a yes. lot of extra damage. Halberd would be sweet. But did find a Bolaslinger. That's great, because... 
the Bola Slinger not only taps creatures, but it can also tap artifacts. So you can tap that that 5-5 Incubate token even before it's been transformed and not have to worry about that being uh, being blocked. Mm -hmm. So oh. right now it's just a question of whether or not Nanthacorn can stabilize. He's got, he's got some action in hand. This feels like a very close, like in, in a turn or two, we're going to have a clash that's going to decide who wins. Right, because, you know? because Nanthacorn this turn has the ability to make a 5-5. Five -five. Mm and then next turn has the ability to untap and then play a Cosmic Hunger to get another creature off the battlefield. The question is, will he be able to survive? Will he be alive at that point? And also, you know, if you're on Autumn's side of the battlefield, can she pile enough damage on in time? Or does she find a key removal spell or a key way to just right. keep things at bay? Down to 13. And I need a hand. Three. Cards in hand says not the corn. Three of them, okay, back to me. Right. There's land number six now. Five. And we're going to see the Tangled Skyline. Five. Yep. Five. Up to 18. Eight. And yep. Autumn's, Autumn's only play next turn is going to be to play the Bola Slinger, tap down that 5-5, five five, and we'll still be able to get in for a good attack. But however, if she does that, she will be tapped out. Yes. So Nanthacorn will still have that 5-5 five five in play, and on the following turn can untap, kill that Bola Slinger, and then I don't know right now if Autumn even has a way to get through that 5-5 five five beyond that's, that. That's the real question. Oh, I just shudder whenever I see the Bola Slinger. Oh, I've man, never beat I it. I just realized next turn can be pretty savage here for Nanthacorn because if you think about it, Autumn is probably... Autumn knows that as the aggressor, she's going to need to be attacking this turn, right? You're putting on a counter, you're getting in for nine, which is a significant amount of damage. Hmm. But however, Nanthacorn next turn can, can transform the 5-5, five five, kill the Slinger, then flip the invasion of Zendikar as well. So we're going to have a 4 4 and a 5 5. Ooh. Good hand one. Uh, no, no, sorry. So we'll have a 4 4 in play. Um, three, he also three, can three, jump three, with the blocks. portent tracker here to save some damage and still transform and look, into he's a He's like, five I got five. all the mana in the world, so I'm good here. Yeah, so just soak up four damage here. Okay. I take six. And you can see yep. why, right? Yep. I, he knows that life total preservation is absolutely key right now. So this thing's going to become a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian. This is very close. Oh, oh there's Galton Maverin. Now, where are we at? Oh, where's we that have, Portent Tracker? No, I see two planes and two forests with an island in hand. I think we okay. are good. If that's the direction Nanthacorn wanted to go, you can choose to make five 1-1 one, one life-linking tokens here, right? Make one. Oh, is it one? Yeah. It's, oh, it's number a, of attacking. Excuse right. me. Right. It's it's either make a giant token or how many creatures but you still, have. Still, I mean. But you know, I I, I think, one token. I with think life I might. Link. I might still favor. You'd get a four four and a one one. Right. But the question is, do you do you still just want to get the slinger off the battlefield I now? I would. And make the four four. <laughs> now, interesting thing is, had he kept the tracker back, you could have been able to, I think, also play the Galta. Oh, interesting. Right, because you, because you have seven lands in play. If you flip the invasion, that's an extra mana source, and then the tracker would be an, uh, an extra one to play both True. Galta and the Cosmic Hunger. I mean, there's not much difference here between having a 5-5 five, five and a 4-4 four, four right. in play. And it gets so it's, you a further it feels ahead. basically free yes. to be able to flip this invasion. Autumn's down to just two cards in hand. Not the corn does not know what they are. We do, but they're not impressive. The, right. Those are not the types of cards that are going to close out the game next turn. Hmm. Okay. Not the corn says go. He had a good think there. Yeah. And ultimately just decided to say go. So I wonder. 
I would like to move to the Clarapax. Okay, just... Okay, so, so now just keeping the 5-5 five five back here and making it so that it's going to be very difficult for Autumn to attack. Sure, I mean, this had to be part of the equation. Yeah. The question is, is but you could have had a 4-4, four four, right? And if you just did it on the previous turn? This is a huge relief for oh. not the corn, by the way. Right. Yeah, the real question is, why not have a, get what? in there and get that 4-4? Four four? Versus a 5-5. Five five. When right. the board is 3-4, three 3-2, three and 3-3. Three three, right. right, so the aerial boost applies Still evenly. Through. Right. Yeah. And now you don't really have a great way to flip this invasion. Yeah, and a couple, like with Galt on the battlefield, now you can start looking at flipping invasions, but. I mean, you can see, <laughs> look, there's no Bolas Linger, and you're going to slam a Galt to this turn, right? So. And if you wanted, you can play the Galta, attack with the 5-5, five five and another make another 5-5 five five trampling attacker. Yes. Decent shot to flip that invasion then, right? I don't yes. think Autumn's just going to throw all of her creatures away, so. No. It's just so similar to the board that he has anyway. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. That you probably just do it. There it is, Galta and Maverick on the battlefield. Yep. Resolves. And this is where the tipping point comes, because if Autumn Burchett can handle this, she's going to win. But if not, it is going to be Nanthacorn who picks up the, uh, the pod victory here. And finally, they're coming in. And this is going directly oh, to the what? face. I mean, to be fair, you got a 12-12 trampler next turn. True. Right? You're like, you look, I'm just getting in. If, if you don't block, you go down to 10, this Galta is probably lethal. That's pretty All sweet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the question I have is, is there a window for a top deck removal spell for Galta to upend this plan? Yeah. I mean, if you're on Autumn's side, I... You're certainly considering just taking it, right? Right, like, you take it. Now, if you draw, what happens if you draw, draw a grasp here? Is, is this a lethal attack? I, is it, it one short? Be. It can't it's be. It's one short, I think. Yeah. Not the corn's at 12, and we're looking at 11 power on Autumn's side of the battlefield, right? <laughs> so one short, even if she did top deck a Realm Breaker's Grabs. Now, Not the corn also has the answer for that, because in his hand is an Atraxas Fall that he boarded in. That's right. He could untap, cast that, kaboom. Uh, yeah, and, and Autumn's got some just some lands in hand, so I mean, yeah. I think that's going to be it here. Yeah, I just don't see how she can withstand the attack that's coming next turn, especially with what we've seen from Nanthacorn. And there it is, Nanthacorn <laughs> takes it down, 3-0's the pod, defeating two PT champs <laughs> along the way. What a start. That's no, incredible. No big deal. I mean, not the court has been playing competitive magic for a long time. Yeah. This is not his first pro tour. He's got a top eight at Grand Prix Beijing in 2013. So he's been playing for at least 10 years. Yeah, right? Rich said at the news desk that um, he played in the 2012 World Magic Cup team right. for Thailand as well. So definitely not new to the scene, but right. still, come on, you got to beat Autumn still and impressive. Reed in your yeah. opening bot. And by the way, he called the shot too. We asked him who he wanted to play in his player survey, and he said Reed Duke. He got Reed Duke very first match just ran him over with Galtas and uh, didn't look back. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a lot easier when you have a pair of them to rely on, and you just saw the power level of that card just completely crush all of his opponents. That's right. And when you say power level, you mean it. That's a lot <laughs> That's of power. That's a lot of power. <laughs> it's a lot of toughness, too. Great job for Not the Corn. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, though, we'll have Eli, Eli Loveman versus Eli Cassis. Don't go anywhere.
And welcome back to the booth here at Pro Tour March of the Machine. Marshall Cycliffe with Paul Chion. And we're wrapping up the draft rounds here. We're in the third round of action. And of course, that means that players are playing for their pod victory to secure that 3-0. Eight players start at the beginning of the draft, but only one can escape with the coveted 3-0. and And we've got two players who rather like their decks somehow at the same pod having drafted similar, both sharing black, I believe, and then one of them's uh, with red and then the other one's with blue. Eli Cassis on the right-hand side of your screen there drafted blue black here and there's eli loveman again pt champs across the board once again oh. and uh yeah they are facing off we're actually going to join them as they enter the third game of action between these two and uh we're just taking a quick look at the deck list here and uh eli cassis has a extremely nice list here yeah and i mean you heard cedric touch on it earlier Ely believes this is the best deck he's ever drafted at the Pro Tour. So I'm really excited to see what he's got here. I am too. I, you know, the, the headliner is he has a Hoarding Broodlord. One of the best rares in the set, That's sure. a very, very good one. And then it looks like he surrounded it with just really powerful, solid, you know, two deadly derision. Like the kind of stuff that you want to see uh, surrounding a big bomb like that. So just classic blue-black control deck here from Eli's side. Yeah, Eli Loveman on the bottom, however, looks like he's mulligan to six here for our game three decider. He's got a Paretic Prankster on the battlefield already, though. Card can be annoying. Okay. All right. Etherblade Agent, though, for Cassis. It always feels a little bit of a bummer to trade it off with something that also has one toughness, but... Yeah, no, that's true. Wouldn't be shocked if he did here. Let's see what he wants to do. Yeah. Given that you are you just kind of want to minimize the damage, I imagine if you're a blue-black deck, you just kind of want to get to the late game. Ooh. It also gets annoying um, later on because if they do transform it, you know, and you don't have stuff just sort of laying around that you're okay with it dying, right. then, then it, can be, it can be pretty annoying. That's a bloated processor there, though, for Loveman. But a good answer here. Stasis field. In stasis gonna... field. Now, however, stasis field, effective at what you need it to do. But when you're playing against red, black specifically, it's the sacrifice colors, right? So this still leaves a permanent on the battlefield for Eli to do something with if he wants, right? So. There's land number five. Zoomy freewheeler here. Yeah, freewheeler's going to mill both players. Ooh, three lands. I'm sure Eli's happy about that. Is that a behold? That looks like a behold. Can't miss the that art right there. So. Hmm. So maybe we shouldn't have been looking so much at that uh, broodlord. <laughs> breach the multiverse. Oh, breach. Excuse me. Collective yes. nightmare. Breach the multiverse. One of the best finishers in the format. There's my guy, the Skittering Surveyor. This is interesting, though. Like, Million and Breach is a big deal. Right. But like, it's hard to get back. You can, like, Halo Forger it back. I don't think he has one, though. Yeah, but he's got a couple of scobs in his deck. Halo Charge scobs. So you get that back, that. play that, then you get the Breach. So when you're playing the blue black deck oftentimes you do have ways to recur both spells and creatures if you have something like a breach that's when all of a sudden the value of uh, something like a halo charge cop goes much much higher right? right because you're like i'm gonna be rebuying these expensive sorceries even getting back a derision feels pretty good yeah when you when you play that card without the big juicy target you're kind of like this is close but not quite there yeah, and when you have that four, four. Like, all right yeah. i'm in you saw deadly derision Sniping a creature just a minute ago. Is this, th this does not feel especially great. I think, is that a traumatic, traumatic revelation on a Icker Drinker? That is the only target. <laughs> he could just say no, though. Right. He, he may just uh, opt for the. Probably just going to incubate here. Make an incubation. Yeah. Because yeah. that would feel really bad. Yeah. I mean, it's arguably an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just enjoying all the creatures on, on Ely's side. It's just all value cards, right? They all just kind of net you a card. Loveman's uh, leaving his cards revealed because he knows them anyway. Right. And you can see that he's not going to keep taking hits in the air from the aerialist. Ooh. There's Timurat. 
Yeah, Timoret. That could do some work here. Particularly yeah. with the interactions that you were talking about yeah. a minute ago, Paul, with buying back your spells and things yeah. from the yard. At its best against kind of the, the black decks, or particularly even the blue black decks, because those decks typically have ways to recur creatures and spells out of the graveyard, right? So being able to have something on board that deals with unsealed the necropolis, very strong. Wow. Jeez, he does he is He's not short of power all. level here. There's invasion of Amonket. Jeez. Many people consider that the mythic uncommon for the set. Yeah, it's it's got to be the best uncommon in the set. Yeah, front side's pretty strong, a solid two for one. Right. But the back side's really it nice. Is brutal. Now, keep in mind, there's an interesting interaction with the invasion of Amonket, as you can see here on the flip side. If you do get to transform it and play it, when you do it, it doesn't actually target, mm -hmm. right? So even though there's a Timurit in play, mm -hmm. wait, you, to Timurit needs to remove all creatures in the graveyard or else you you will be able to copy something that's in the yard. Yeah, and even if you can't, you still get a 4-4. Four, four. Right. So it's like it really only needs to revolve, uh, uh, resolve anything that has like a relevant ETB or, or stat, you know, activated ability or whatever. Exactly. I mean, kind of every creature has that now. <laughs> yeah, there's. A, it's been a while since we've had just some vanilla creatures. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but still, some are much different than others. You see the invasion's going to get knocked down to just one defense. This is not going well for Eli Loveman. No. He has had every threat answered so far. Timoret still hanging around on the battlefield, but isn't uh, able to you know, push any damage through or do anything along those lines. He is starting to go to work on the graveyards, however. Yeah, you got that Timoret in play. You can exile any cards you want with Timoret, but the creatures gain you life. Yeah, and... and Doing something like this tells me that there's probably no unsealed in Necropolis for, in, in for Eli's Loveman. deck, yeah. right? Because he's just removing creatures in your graveyard. So often that will be, given his life total, it's not really at risk. So it tells me that there's probably just a good shot he doesn't have a way to recur creatures out of his yard. Yeah, he doesn't have any unseals, you're correct. And of course, you also want to just remove all the creatures because of the invasion of Amonkhet. So and here's a big decision now for Loveman. The Timurad only has three toughness right now, and it's a 3-3 coming across. Right. But are you really going to chump? Yeah, are you going to chump but, or just give your opponent a 4-4? Four -four, right? Yeah. That still also doesn't feel particularly great. Doesn't feel nice, but uh, it, it has to be better than just throwing away a creature because he's just going to take it out next turn anyway. Uh, yeah. I mean, he does have that O2 bloated processor that he could just could chump there, yeah. sure. All right, well, it looks like Loveman says, all right, this is the window where I have your, the graveyards depleted. Yeah. And so I will allow you. But still, 4-4s four matter. Right. I mean, Ely just has the better, excuse me, yeah, Ely just has the better board here. Oh, yeah, they got us good on this one, Paul. I, you, right. Sure. I mean, whoever wins this, if there's ever a mirror, it'll be a battle of whoever won this match, right? They win the name Right, fight they win too? the name fight. I like that. that. Oracle tragedy here for Ely Cassis. And as you can see, he's got uh, some choices. Uh, I, I just, uh, I'm wondering, I came this in, I say trigger, he says sure. You have to I, choose the mode, Do you have to choose right? before I say trigger? Or like when the cards. He's asking if he has to yeah. pick what cards. Because it doesn't actually say when. So usually when a triggered ability goes on the stack, if it has targets, you choose targets at that time. That right. should be what's happening here. Right, yeah, but the, but the, the second mode on Oracle of Tragedy still has you target four cards. That's what I'm saying. Right, yeah. right. So you still have the opportunity to right. get those cards if you want. But I imagine, yeah, I imagine Ely was just going to loot it here anyways. Yeah, he, he, he was going to ask because if there was a way that he could get around Timoret and actually shuffle in the, something, the, breach. the breach or whatever, yeah. then he would have. But, you right. know, he, he knew that probably wasn't what was going to happen. Yeah. Speaking of the breach, right. Tim Red just had it for lunch, so, so you that's are, gone. You are not getting recurred in any way here. Yeah, this is an interesting dance because Eli Loveman is, you know, that Timoret is kind of working on a lot of the long-term game plans for Eli Cassis, but 
he's also just getting get ran over. Like right. he is behind on board. I mean, they're just a four-four and a three-three here on the battlefield. Needs to find some way Ickershade to get in now, the Wade, which he does have deadly derision, as you can see, okay. sitting in his hand, kind of waiting. Right, but. This, the trigger on the Icarus Shade is not on sacrifice, it's at the end of your turn. Mm -hmm. So there won't be any surprise block at a counter onto the Icarus Shade. Yeah. But with the derision in, in Eli's hand, might want to just fire it off on the 4-4 four -four here. But Eli showing some patience here. Yeah, he's like, you know what? I've gained a bunch of life. It's just his 4-4. Like, there's no big disaster here. There's Ooh, no battles getting transformed. Seven? And then tap a creature for a Broodlord. Oh, okay. The Broody Boy, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to get derision trigger straight away. But there is a trigger. All right, but. He can get anything he wants. Yeah, still down a card and. Ely now gets to get the third best card in his deck, right? Yeah, it's getting interesting, though, because he th this has meant that his two best cards have been cleanly dealt with, and he does right. have a very controlling deck. Do you and just get a removal spell? You do you start to wonder, Yeah. does he have enough firepower? Right. Like, another good blocker here from Loveman, and it's like, uh, yeah. kick it through? Like Timurit doing some work. Timurit has been absolutely absurd this game. And I'm wondering... Traumatic Revelation, you. Traumatic Revelation, oh, you. What did you get? What did you get? It was, if it's just a removal spell, it's not too bad. Yeah, was it a derision, maybe? Did he get something? Uh, oh, no. Chose to get make a three. So now there's a three, three here. Three and one's a two. So I guess he showed him, but we didn't get to see. Right. And will Eli just choose to sacrifice a treasure just to turn the shade into a 3-4 here? Yeah, Ch chat's correct that the card that he took stays exiled. Is Does Eli have no cards in hand at all? He must just be on zero. Must be. Okay. Yep, and did sacrifice the treasure here. So now we're looking at a 3-4 and a 3-3. Three, three yeah, so he's blockers. just making up a bunch of blockers. Like, right. Like, this is the point for me where I'm like... Try not to let you know that I'm trying to figure out how many cards are in your library. <laughs> but I want to know how many cards are in your library. Right. Like, and, and Ely's been the one who's been doing a little more digging here. Right? Definitely. So. Hard to find a, a great attack. Okay. Corey, Corey's in the chat and says that he did show at least a card off camera, but that... Um, Eli decided not to take it. Again, that card that you see over on the far right that's face down is the exile card from the Broodlord. Yep. It will stay there until Cassis decides to play it. Got it, got it. He has three cards in hand, says our intrepid sideline reporter oh, wow. currently, <laughs> Corey Bamaster. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. <laughs> but he didn't take any of them. Right. Either because he couldn't or chose not to. You go for a double, and if that's a deadly derision, that's pretty rough. Probably. You could. You could like also make a. The, three, is you, it getting better? You tip? could make a three-three too, right? Yes. Could, and put all three creatures in front of it to yes. play around the derision. That's true. Yeah. That I don't does know. look like it's a derision. Why, I wonder why he's keeping up the mana here. Well, he's going to take out Timurat. Okay. Boy, but. You gotta feel like the damage from Tim Rat's okay, been okay. done. Yeah. I know that on board it didn't look like it was doing much, yeah. but decks like Ely Cassis have inevitability. Right. They have the ability to get back their best stuff and kill you with it over and Rem over again. Yeah, remember now, I mean, if the Oracle dies, mm -hmm. Ely can shuffle some of the impactful spells that he still has in his graveyard back into his deck. Yeah, I wonder if Loveman was targeting. First, of course, the most obvious stuff, but then even the, the more expensive stuff for the Oracle. Yeah. Like to reduce its number of targets or whatever. Oh. Oh, oh Halo yeah. charged. Yeah. Scob. Okay. This is everybody milling two cards. That's a Judith? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. What about you? Uh, nine. 16 and 9. 16 and 9. <laughs> oh, 
Because these decks thrive off of that inevitability. Right. Like, like one thing that we could have seen here, it, if it weren't for Timuret, right, is to get back Breach. You just cast it once your opponent's at 10 or fewer cards, right. and then you're just like, oh. So with 16 and 9, even if Ely shuffles four cards back in, if we're looking at a milling situation, Loveman is ahead here. That's right. Your turn. But I mean... And there's a lot of incidental mill, right, by the way, exactly. in this set. Like, doesn't have to be a card that's designed to get them. Now, you can't ignore the body here, right? The Scob is still a 4-4 getting in. There's a 3-3 that's also looking to get in. Wow, and also attacking with a 2-2. Frisky here from huh. Cassis. Blocks are going to happen. No, no, they're not going to happen. Okay. Another deadly derision. Which makes a lot more sense. And another treasure token. That doesn't look like it's going to play a big part so here, though. Trade there, take seven, or just... Block. More damage. Cast this. Hit a kicker. That's a final flourish sure. there. Okay. So it still ends up being a chump block on the 3-3, but everything else is going to end up trading off. All right. And it is going to be five power versus zero. So Loveman just needs to find something of medium yeah. size. A 4-4. Four, four. Removal spell would be fine, you, you know, to kill the 3-3. Three, yeah. three, and Maybe then just sort of... Maybe a Gloomfang Mauler. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be really good. <laughs> He needs to hang on. There's five damage. <laughs> Is there a, he did he find something? something? Removal? You have nine. I had, you had eight he has now. eight now. Eight. Eight. And as you mentioned, uh, Eli does not have an unseal, which is one of the ways that the red black deck can mill. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there it oh. is. Merciless repurposing there for Loveman. He doesn't have quite enough mana to transform and block right. as well, but close enough. Yeah, He's only, only going to take two, and he'll have a blocker, so he is now ahead on board. Now the question is, how many win conditions does Ely have left? Like anything that can attack. Right. Because his heavy hitters are gone. That's not it. Furtive Analyst is not I don't know if close. you want to be uh, looting here. You do. <laughs> well, this is one of those ones where you yeah. start to go, does it matter? Right. And Eli's still at 23? Yes. Yeah, that Timoret has dominated this game. Oh, yeah. I have 14. It, two, three, four, it five, gave him a huge six, life total six, and six, seven, took away Eli's recursion ability. Right. And, and that's the thing. That, that's what was supposed to give Eli's deck inevitability, yes, right? Yes, exactly. The fact that you have multiple scobs to get back your, your, your breaches, but because of that singular Timoret, yeah. it allowed Eli to just kind of go, uh, chew through everything. And now I'm pretty sure Eli's just kind of on the, I'm going to try to deck you here. And you see what's happening here. Loveman's blocking the 1-4 and not killing the Oracle because <laughs> he doesn't want that shuffle to I'll happen. I'll take one. Hey, it'll, it'll get him up to four turns quicker of a victory. And Eli digging here. <laughs> Okay. Oh, it feels so bad if you're Ely Cassis. He had all the tools. Yeah, his deck is great, but needs to find a way to close it out. That was a fantastic, fantastic draw there from Loveman. Merciless repurposing, just the perfect card there, right? I mean, perfect. get that 4-4 four, four and then have a body that's bigger than everything on the other side. Just absolutely ideal. All right, Eli's going to play okay. an informant, but Eli had a swamp. All right, getting in for one again. Down to 21, goes Loveman. <laughs> oh, man. Tough beats. I mean, there's, did you say five? Yeah. Okay, Boomtown, Beatstick. Beat stick. Yep. I, don't, I, I don't think e Eli has any interest in attacking. Go. Nope. Yep. He's just going to pass back. Going to mill you out here. And it's a slow death if you're on Eli's so side. This is so Eli's like, I know I have nothing left, right? It, if, I mean, he knows that perhaps he does. But right now he's thinking, really? This is how I'm going to go down? This is so rough. Also, he probably has a decent idea. Like he's probably deduced what's left. Yeah, over these turns, he's right. definitely he's thought like, about oh, it. How many lands do I see here, right? right? <laughs> no blocks. Just begging for that <laughs> no block from blocks. Loveman, but Loveman has no interest in it whatsoever. Oh, man. Down to 20. 
Does he does Ely have any other big big creatures here he can play? I mean, even if he had like a Broodlord, it would be close. You know, right. like this is this is tough. Tidal Terror, maybe. Yeah, something oh, like that. That's another. And now this this is something with Reach. So Funny. even flyers don't do it. Cassis <laughs> actually does have a Tidal Terror, but he didn't play it. Got it. Didn't need it. Nope. Or oh, might might have needed it here. Could have could have used <laughs> could've it. Could have used it here. In fact, it would be excellent on this board <laughs> with the little junkers laying around to make it unblockable. Yeah. But I think it's just too late now. Jeez. What what a game. Timurit. Eli hanging on and Timurit MVP. Paul, you can either have Timurit or Breach plus Blue Lord, Brood Lord. <laughs> I'll let you decide. Uh, yeah. Because he's passes to turn back to Loveman. He's got to feel so clever right now. <laughs> okay. Oh! Oh, he is going to start jamming. We are turning it around here, folks. I mean, there's not a lot of pressure here from, from Ely's side, right? Yeah, almost zero. This is an attack for nine. We got a triple triple block here on the on the 3-3, three, three, or 4-3, excuse me. And that would allow e Eli to get the surveyor and the informant off the battlefield. Probably want to keep the board clear. All three on there. Oh, something else? Hmm. Oh, it's had a, that's another derision. Jeez. That's a, that's a very aggressive derision here. Yeah, I think I would just sit, right? Like, right. What's the... He's got to be considering something. Perhaps he's thinking, well, maybe Ely does have something. Yeah. Right? Take five. Treasure, please. You take four. Or, yeah, five, five. 24. I mean, he's at 29 down. I, I don't even know if Loveman yeah. can get this done how, in the time how, frame. How, well, how many cards does Loveman have? Can Ely, could Ely potentially more. be holding a bunch of mill cards and play it all in one turn and yes. somehow get Eli before he dies? Yes. That's something he could be trying to position. Great point. That's, that's definitely. When we last counted, Eli was way up on cards. So He was four or five, yeah. And Ely's also looted a couple of times since then. True. He would, you know, Cassis would have to do this on the absolute last turn. Right. Like, draw his last card and go and ding, ding, ding. Exactly. That is possible, though. He had at least two Halo Charge scobs. And remember, if Loveman is going to, is going to look to be oh. this aggressive. So he has three, but he's playing two. But if He has two Disturbing Conversion. That also mills. Right. And remember, ah, uh, OK. I was wondering how aggressive Eli was going to be. Because yeah. if he was very aggressive, Ely can now block with the Oracle and shuffle four cards back into the deck, right? Uh-huh, but this is going to give Menace. Exactly. OK. Sorry. Drag Recycler could provide a little bit of extra. Like, that's the kind of card you can win on upkeep. <laughs> right. <laughs> is that one card left? Two cards left? Because he has to be going for this play that you described, Paul. I feel like that's his only angle, but I'm just not sure how many mill cards he has left. That's one card, I think. It's just one, which means Loveman has five? Let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. That's a lot. Five, I think he might have been in business, right. but eight's a lot. And Cassis has to wait till the last turn because they mill him too. Right. So that's seven. Can he get seven cards? Uh, is there, and it has to be has, seven. Has time been called? What, what is that? What is that die of uh, one? I'm not sure. Okay. I oh, don't. is that Rankle and Torbrin? Yes, it is. Oh, my. All right, two unblockable creatures here getting in. Rankle, you can attack with the trigger. You can then make your other creature deal two additional damage. Each the source would deal damage, blah, blah, blah. So this is an attack for nine. Okay. Now this resolves, you take six from this. So nine total. Fifteen, and then, yeah. Javelinier can deal two, get him down to seven. Second main, I'll activate the Javelinier. You take four. 
<laughs> oh, right, of course. Yeah, that's double trouble. Source would give damage. It doesn't trigger off this. No, because that's loss of life. That's loss of life, not damage. What oh, he's trying, oh, get but, but look, he set up a victory on his own upkeep here. Right, so now he can't get milled out. That's right. So even if Cassis goes, okay, play a three things, mill you, right. then he can just hit him with a javelin ear and then sacrifice something to the recycler before his draw Absolutely. steps. Super smart by yeah, Loveman. Really, really heads up here. So now he really needs to find a way to mill Eli and kill the recycler or javelin ear. Oh, yes, he can kill either. Man, this is... It is going to be hard to top no, this no, for no. my favorite game, right? Yep. Cassis is at five. The Javelinier won't deal four damage on upkeep, right? Why is that? Be because the wrinkle, is that a permanent thing? I don't remember. I th uh, yeah. I'm Th just going to keep it real <laughs> with you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever it deals combat damage this to a turn, player. This turn. So you're right. Right. So that's not what's happening so here. That's not what's happening, but he's very close to dead. He is very close to dead anyway, and Cassis may also not have enough mill, have saved up enough mill to actually get the job done. Cassis needs, Cassis needs to play a convergence on one of these creatures. Maybe both. Hmm. And then find a way to kill his oracle to shuffle cards back in. That would be a thing okay. too. All right, so that deals with one. This is an attack for four, though. Three cards left there for Loveman. Nightmare? Nightmare itself. Nightmare itself! Okay. Shuffle four cards. They Shuffle. have to be three or greater. Okay. But so there's he's got a three. at least one. There's a serv... I, I don't... I don't know if Ely has enough here. This is awesome. Right, and remember, that's still, this is still an attack for four coming in, right? With Cassis at five and a Drag Recycler sitting there. And a Javelin ear. And a Javelin ear sitting there. Any cards in your library? I have three cards in my library. So I think what, he's, what he may be doing, this is post-board, so we're not 100% sure, but there's some interesting, so he has, he had main deck two copies of Moment of Truth. Right. He may be setting himself up here to have a very specific subset of cards as his library and then get one of them and use it. Like, I don't know if he has enough for this, but Deadly Derision or something like that. You know what I mean? Where right, you, like right. your library is only three or four cards. Yeah. And then you search through three or four cards. <laughs> I'm just not sure if Ely has enough here, but of course we're still not exactly sure what the last few cards, because Ely is just dead here. Yes. Unless he has another piece of interaction. Halo, invasion, Halo, invasion, nightmare. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, and the Here's scob. Just to verify real quick, uh, life totals at this point? Four, four, uh, 20. 20, 20, 20. Oh, it looks like the life totals got a little off, too. So he's actually at four. I went from 19 okay. to 20. I'm saying, yeah. All right. Which certainly changes things as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because now... We need to deal with this 4-3, and then there's still three damage on board with the Recycler and the Javelinier. Okay, there it is. Okay. Moment of truth. And then so minus playing, three, minus three. We're playing Doomsday now. <laughs> <laughs> He's just straight up setting up his library. This is awesome. What a close one here. Oh, something better. It's just derision, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, Love, Loveman only has three extra points of damage, right? So if he takes zero this combat. But, yeah, the, the question is. You really are a master. <laughs> <laughs> Before damage, I'll sack this one. Yeah. Give the one. Okay, you're, you're down to three. Are. Eli giving Eli some uh, He gave him props. Credits. Yep. I still don't know how you get out of this. I mean, at three, go. no cards he in says, hand? Go, well, yeah, there's only two cards left in library. Yep. And there's a Halo no, Charge no, Scob, which was going to be that or the other card here. That mills okay, that mills, both. Two, that mills two cards. Yes. But you can. Have, this is an upkeep kill here for, from, from oh, Eli. Only if it's alive. It's, only if it's alive. The Javelin Ear. Right, but the Scob puts it on top, correct? Yes. And there's just no way for him to get <laughs> right. it. Right. Whew. Close one. Oh, oh 
what a man. game! Eli Loveman <laughs> finds the out. victory. Cassis gave him all he could handle. And I'll tell you, go back to when Eli Loveman started attacking. Yeah. That because you you know, I think a lot of people would be like, ah, I'm gonna win, you know, this is gonna be fine. I don't really need to worry about, you know, your life total so much. And he recognized even though um Cassis was at like twenty seven or whatever, I need to start going on this. Right. And uh he absolutely needed it there. Right. I mean, you saw it. it kind of towards with about eight cards left, Loveman was clearly on the I'm going to try to mill you plan. And then all of a sudden, he started drawing some action. And he's like, wait a second. What's the better path to victory? Is it me being aggressive, putting pressure on your life total so I have an extra different way to win? Or can I just naturally hope to deck you, right? And given how that game played out, I think it's possible if Loveman chose to be more patient and just keep everything yeah. back, I think Cassis could have found a way there to I deck Loveman. I think he would have beat him. Yeah. Yeah. Great wow. stuff. We've got more matches to bring you, however. We're going to bring you game, as it turns out, number two between Nathan Wait, Stoyer Nathan's, and Max McVitie. Nathan's 2-0. and oh. Is this a surprise to anybody? Not I... to anybody, especially his opponent, Max McVitie. We'll see if he can take him down as we join this one in progress. Again, we're bringing you the finals of a bunch of pods here. We've already done two. This is the third one um, to try to get that 3-0 victory. I'm just, it's, how does, he never loses. He really does. <laughs> it's been years okay. since he lost. Well, he is, he's down a game here. Okay, down a game to Max McVitie. Land go. Let's see what Stoyer has to kick off. No, just a couple of twos to kick off the festivities for both players, though they are both on the board quickly. Yeah, flywheel racer. Yeah, we'll see if he uses it for the, for the mana. For, for evil or good. Right. <laughs> In the meantime, a clear attack here from McVeady. All planes. Ooh. Yeah. Frexian yeah, Awakening is going to be his three drop. Yeah, and it's gone. And that'll get him a nice. I mean, that thing's powerful, right? Oh, Skip. absolutely! Wow, incubator Nathan, Nathan for four. just not nothing uh -oh. to impact the board for the first four turns of this game. Hmm. Didn't have anything on three, so what, maybe a stoke the flames here. Sure. There it is. Oh, stoke the flames. There it is. Oh, but oh, wait a second. Oh no! Oh. Jeez, aerial oh, boost nine. to save it, and that's yeah. going to be nine. Wow, this could fall apart really quickly. That was a key moment there for Stoyer, who hasn't really done much on his side. He needed that to go right. But McVitie had the answer. With, with the trick He's here. got another stoke another to flames. Another stoke, okay. You do what you got to do, and you yeah. notice that was a main face stoke. Right. Not that he had the choice last time, but uh, he wanted to make sure. Five. And he's down to five already. Wow. Now, Max is stuck here on just white mana, has a bunch of blue cards, but has still been able to play an impactful spell every turn. Yeah. And that's going to wow. be it. Wow. Wow. All he did was just dump a few creatures on the battlefield, and a slow start there from Stoyer means that Max McVeady takes down his pod and gets the 3-0. Stoyer, poor Nathan. He's going to have to settle for a 2-1 and one at Unlimited. He's not yeah. used to that, you know? Yeah. It's just not, not his normal game plan. <laughs> I mean, that's how crazy his run he, has been. He, he's going to pick himself back up for the standard portion. That's going to be my prediction because I don't We've know if got, he can handle this loss. Listen to this one, Paul. We've got another we get to see the finals go. This is Seth Manfield versus Jean Emmanuel Dupra. When you talk about limited heavy hitters, those two are near the top of the heap every single time. That's a lot of top finishes there, Marshall. Seriously. Got a Hall of Famer here in Seth Manfield. Also, both of these players, um, I don't know how to put it, consider themselves limited players primarily. They favor limited. You know, they're, they're the people on their team that people ask the limited questions to, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and, and when you even speak to Depra, I believe he... he, he it's kind of a self-proclaimed, like, you think I might be pretty good at constructed, but limited is kind of really where, uh, where he shines. He, you know, back when we were playing some of the, uh, the arena events, he had kind of the highest limited win rate mm -hmm. when you compare him to a lot of the other best players out there. That's right. He's really good. All right. It looks like we're underway here in game number two. 
Yeah, it looks like we're cruising right along here, yeah. Paul. A little, uh, just a slight adjustment there. A little bit quicker for <laughs> you here. Hey, get all the matches here. I mean, especially you don't want to miss some of this matchup here, right? We have two of some of the um, most accomplished players at this event going at it, so. What just happened? It says 2R Sorcery. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll buy it. In the Searing meantime, Barb is my guess. That is yeah, correct. That Otherwise known as 2R. 2R Sorcery. <laughs> yeah. I think he did actually write it right below the... Yeah. Interesting to see Invasion of Kaladesh here for Manfield. Card looked pretty good. Hasn't actually played that well. Yeah, it's yeah. Very medium. It's two mana for a one-one body is just not the most impressive thing in this format. And even when you do flip it, it's not as great as you would think. It's not that good. Yeah. Yeah. There's meeting of minds now for Jean Emmanuel. By the way, joking aside, the reason that you see that proxy planes there for Manfield is because it was a foil searing barb. Got it. Sure. And uh, just to make sure that all the cards are identical right. in your deck when being shuffled, etc., it's good to do that. Ooh, that's Invasion of Segovia. How about some baby krakens? Yeah, some nice one-one tramplers. Yeah, very the fearsome. Luis reminded us that the plane of Segovia, everything's <laughs> very small. Everything is very small, hence. 1-1 one, one Tramplers. Yeah. I mean, when I think of a Kraken, you know, not not in the 1-1 one, one space. I'm thinking 10-10. Right. Oh, but, I mean, come on. You have to be jealous if you're Seth Manfield. I mean, John Emanuel got to fire off two, two draw twos here. That's right. The mines have been met, and his hand is full. And Seth not really putting on that much pressure here. He's not really doing much at all. Another flywheel racer here. Sean Emanuel. This is more flywheel racers than I would have expected coming into this tournament. Marshall. Agreed. Agreed. And Ral's reinforcement's going to hit the battlefield as well. No good attack here. As Seth can crew the vehicle here yep. and turn it into a 2 5 flyer. Mm -hmm. it's power equal to the number of artifacts that you have in play. Synergizes well with all the incubate tokens. Of course, the Thopter that you get yeah. on the front side as well. On um, Seth, did he pass with just five mana and a couple of tokens in he play? He sure did. So there are two cards that you have to be really mindful of uh -huh. here when you're playing against the blue-red deck. What are we thinking? One is Shadow the Source, uh -huh. which is not too bad. I mean, it's just a removal spell. But the other one is Artistic Refusal. And any time your opponent gets to cast that one against you with this kind of mana up, that is when things when, when, when things get kind of scary, and you have to be mindful of it, so you really don't want to play your biggest spell a lot of the time into what Seth is representing right yeah, now. that card is such a blowout. All right, we're going to see Predic Prankster, though, for Jean-Emmanuel Dupra, and then he's going to use his freshly cast Prankster to Convoke. A cleansing. Oh. oh, but that's a side of Cryptomancer, but it's going to get oh, countered but one back mana here. Oh. oh, Assimilate Essence. Just uh, three mana available here for Manfield, so he will not be able to pay the four. So the side of Cryptomancer gets countered, and the Temporal Cleansing will actually hit the vehicle and send it somewhere. Yeah, it allows John to try to get in for some damage here. And Assimilate Essence, also a very impressive card in this format. There have been lots of effects like that in, in limited play, which are decent, right? Remove soul effects, but just its flexibility, it's still relevant in the late game. Get that 2-2 incubate token. And there's not a lot of spells people play. Mm -hmm. A lot of the spells are your battles, right? And this right. also gets those cards. I'm curious um, if Jean Emmanuel is attacking Seth or All right. the battle. But we're going to see Volcanic Spite. There's just a lot of spells being cast here back yes, and forth, right? Yes, it really is a lot, and especially with Convoke and stuff happening. Okay. Interesting also, Seth did look like he put his Invasion of Kaladesh second from the top. Mm. Which I'm a little surprised at. Yeah. We'll see if that's true, and it is. 
So now planning on a attacking it? I don't know. I this don't know. invasion of Segovia is going to flip next turn. I mean, Seth only has a couple of 1-1s in play. Jean does not care about losing any a couple of these 1-1s to try to flip this invasion. Yeah. And should Seth have one more 1-1 one -one Thopter here? Okay. Right? Are they just grabbing a token for him, maybe? Not sure. Because he did cast the invasion of Kaladesh, and his other Thopter hadn't died, I don't think so. No. So John just needs to figure out how many creatures you want to set at the invasion. Probably can just send all four of the one ones. Not really too interested in uh, trading the prankster for the thopter. Could of course flip it. I don't, yeah, I wonder what happened to that Thopter. Did, can you there miss a, that trigger? I, oh, and it looks like, is that what they're talking about here? Yeah, it doesn't make yeah, sense because he, he's supposed to have two. I, I guess since it is a trigger, right? you, you could miss it? Oh, no. These are judge hands explaining. Right. This is big. I mean, he put that second from the top. It already is kind of a medium strength card. And then if you don't, if you even, don't even get, get the, the one primary one. <laughs> right. function of it, that is not where you want to be. But I don't see another Thopter hitting the battlefield here, Paul. He may have just missed that trigger. Yep. Looks like it. Hmm. Which is going to make it easier for Jean Emmanuel to flip the invasion of Segovia. which turns all of his non-creature spells. Um, and they all have Convoke. Yeah. And he gets, what, a 3-3 three, three out of the deal, too? He gets a 3-3, three, three, and at the beginning of your end step, you get to untap four creatures. So yeah. they effectively have Vigilance. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, and you just, can cast anything at that point. Right, you can con you can just tap out Convoke on your turn, untap, then Convoke something else. It gets silly if you right? have action in your hand. And remember, this is the game that two meeting of the minds has happened for jean Emmanuel Dupra, so he probably still has some action. Oh, it looks like we uh, upgraded to a peel to the head judge situation here. Right. Sometimes when you receive a ruling from a judge, which is what had happened before, you have further questions, shall we say? Yep. And so you can say, I'd like to speak to the head judge and make sure that you get the correct ruling. Yeah, and certainly at an event like this, you are, of course, responsible for all of your own triggers. Yeah, I think, obviously, I can't hear what they're saying. I don't know what they're saying. But maybe part of the equation is, well, I did resolve this, and I did get the counters on it and stuff. Is, is right. part of that happening a Thopter have to appear? Or are those yeah. separate? You know, these are the types of kind of minutia that you get into in this situation. But at any rate, it doesn't look like he's going to get the Thopter. So that is going to have to be left behind here for Seth. Wow, and this is big, big turn here for Jean Emanuel. Yikes! This is scary stuff for Seth Manfield. Yeah. And that stoked the flames. Okay, it's just all foils all day here for Seth. <laughs> <laughs> all the shinies. Okay, so at least he stems the bleeding there and doesn't let Jean Emanuel have that kind of insane go off type turn. Yeah. He's got a Xeric Strobe Knight now. That but, could but, definitely start adding to the board too. Oh, what is this? What does he have? Oh, okay. Okay. He's got a Shiv and Branch Burner. Yeah, that well, is going to immediately that, transform. That was what, fine. Yeah, now you have a 2-5 blocker with flying in play. So The real question is, can John Emanuel take advantage of all this extra mana and resources that he's accrued? I don't know what is that, that is. I think that's Kari, Zev, and Baral. Okay. That's just a guess. He okay. tapped, what, three mana? And, it, it's a, it's and a, it's, it's in a, the right colors? Cool yeah. Card. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That's a good one. Oh, Get in. Oh, no. Convoke. Oh, he's convoking. Now get in. No, can't get in because it's still a 4-4, four, four, right, against the 2-5 flyer? Yeah, so he'll just have a, a way to deal with the branch burner and on the, the two, other two side. And the 2-2 knight. So huge, huge board Jeez, here. Jean Emmanuel has just been real clean this game. He's had multiple double spell turns. I think three. Yeah. 
That's a lot. Okay. That's Invasion of Ragatha. I didn't do much here. Gets to oh, it's going to get negated, though. Yeah, it would have killed a token. Yes, and knocked John Emanuel down to 15. Yeah, well, not a lot of negate targets, so... Yeah. Might as well. But now John Emanuel gets to untap yeah. with Carry Seven Baral, which has just an absurd stat line. It also just it's just a three mana two four menace first strike. Right, that's right? That's, that's just the stat good. line. Yeah, right. that's the one. But, but <laughs> it is so easy to turn it on. All it right, really here we is. go. And in comes the squad. Everything's attacking. Right. Now now Seth is just gonna line up the best possible blocks without thinking about or now that card has menace. It Seth. does. He does need another blocker. So this is not so, going to uh, work. John Emanuel will tell him. Absolutely. <laughs> this has <laughs> Menace, as they say in the business. Huh. Maybe. This is interesting. It, Seth's playing a little, yeah. a little loose today. Yeah. Like, you usually don't see these types of things from him. And what is it? Shatter the source? Yes. Is this also a foil? Apparently I so. I guess so. Okay, well, so got rid of all the, most of the big threats here on Jean Emmanuel's side, right? Yes, he's down to eight, though. He is down to eight, but now we're looking at a 2-4, a bunch of 1-1s. One Depends on what he plays here. Could potentially stabilize. He's got the biggest creature in play. He does. He's kind of hanging out of that branch burner at this point. Yeah. Oh, this is a John. big attack now from okay. Sean Emanuel. This is the second all-in alpha strike that in the last two turns. Okay, and this will be an attack for five. You take five, go to three. And Jean Emanuel seems just thrilled with that transaction. He's also going to get a trigger from that the product die, prankster. Oh, was that? Oh, that was a two-five, of course. Yeah, so it ate up the three-two, but then the trigger okay. finished it off. This better be big. That's good. Isaac Ataxias actually yeah. is kind of big. Yeah, also, Seth, he remembered the trigger, so that right. was good. Okay. <laughs> and that's Invasion of Mercadia. Right. So it gets to... Like, oh, is he going to attack? No. No, right? You put that thing back, no, no, Seth. No, 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 Leave no, no, that no, branch no, no, burner right where it is. Oh, and that's an Invasion of Segovia of his and own. You can flip that, and you can flip... You, and then all your creatures have... Uh, will, will untap here. Yes. Right? You get two one ones. You would <laughs> what is this? Okay, He's Seth. turning it around. Okay, Seth. Okay. Right, and that's a free attack, too. I mean. Might as oh, well, here we go. as they say in the business. Okay. Flip it. Wow. Oh, John man. Emanuel did two alpha strikes back to back, and all of a sudden, <laughs> his board state looks a lot worse than it just was. Big, big turn here from Seth. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now what? Land go from John Emanuel. Oh, oh, Seth turned this game around. Jeez. Now Seth can uh, can eat up the other invasion here, right? Flip that one. Get in sure. for one. Dell on tap. Oh. And this one ends the game very quickly when you Absolutely. have a board state like this. The trample on those Krakens might actually matter this game. Right. And keep in mind, I don't know what Seth has in hand, but you can actually make... Two one ones and then make two one ones again with that trigger. You're right from from the invasion of Segovia. The three three ground creature getting in there against the two four. Oh, of course, Seth can give his entire team plus one plus zero. That's right. That's part of the deal. And we're going to see a double block here, so that will take down Carries Evan Baral for Manfield. Yeah, Kyron Flame right here. Two and a red, discard a card, make two one ones, and your entire team gets plus one, plus zero. And uh, Seth has turned it around. He's at he three has. life. Incredible from Seth. What and he a knows turnaround. he needs to close this out as fast as possible before John Emanuel finds a burn spell. <laughs> yeah, stoke like, the flame. Oh, stoke you, sorry. Yeah. Fist bump. And that's Seth Manfield picking up the win for the 3 0.
Who needs that wow, top third? He looks so far behind that game. Yeah. I wow, I'm stunned that he won that. Because usually when you see John Emanuel turn the corner that big, you know, he had built up resources for four or five turns, and then he just floods you with them all at once. Right. And Seth was somehow able to get out of it. Incredible. Yeah, just found exactly what he needed, just enough to survive, right? To stoke the flames on the 4-4. All of a sudden, you make two 1-1s. You get to now attack, flip, all your creatures on tap. And all of a sudden, John has a board that just has the exact same number of creatures, but John's board is just all 1-1s. Not Incredible. enough. Yeah, also interesting to see, Paul, that both players had similar strategies, right? We right. saw a lot of Convoke. We saw a lot of small creatures, a lot different than what we saw earlier. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's kind of surprising how similar their decks were. It is. Given that we're drafting within the same pod. Yeah, they yeah. were kind of fighting over the same <laughs> stuff, I think, at least somewhat. All right, it looks like that's going to do it uh, for this round. But that, of course, means that we're going to be transitioning over to Constructed Play and Standard coming up soon. So that's something to look forward to for you Constructed fans. For us, that's the end of our limited coverage, at least for now. But when we come back, we'll have Standard. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>